Welcome to Revive Mercy Podcast. This month we're revisiting a theme we had one year ago, building a home. The environment can play a bigger role when when it comes to someone's overall stability. Boundaries can be that one piece of that puzzle. A Cypriotic proverb says, when your garden is dry, don't pour water into other gardens. I find that very important, especially working in the mental health field. Um, uh, you know, Revive Ministries not, doesn't proselytize, but I do. There's one thing in the Bible that I want to uh, mention. Um, it was with uh, this place called Bethel. Jacob and Esau, just to skim through the, the story, was Jacob stole his birthright and he fled. And he was sleeping on a rock as his stone. And it, later in the story, he says, that place I call Bethel, house of God. So a house or a home can be anywhere. You know, not in, in regards to safety, that usually plays a big, big role. And like I said in, men, in many other podcasts before regarding house and the home, just using that verbiage, there is a difference. You know, if, if you kind of think about it, the difference between a house versus a home. Today we have a new guest. Her name is Dr. Maureen. Thank you so much for coming on and uh sharing your insight your and um just being part of the conversation no i truly appreciate you having me on today and allowing me to share my story with your listeners this is awesome <laughs> no problem i want to give a little, little disclaimer obviously wherever you are in the world listen to this uh this in the united states 988 is a suicide crisis lifeline um but what i don't like re uh reinventing the wheel so whatever works whatever group whatever community you're in i just ask that you if you're able to say those three words i need help you know that's what i ask you know get professional help get you know if you're in church setting ask people there to help you you know if you're in a community just wherever you feel comfortable i just really encourage those who are listening again dr maureen i know that um People say it better than I do, and George Moore says it this way. I think it's interesting. I want to get your thoughts. He says, a man travels the world over in search of what he needs and returns home to find it. What comes to mind when you hear this? It's kind of poetic. but Yeah, you know, I would say because my journey is on the top of my mind, when mm. I hear this quote, mm. I think think about all the challenges in life and really understanding that those challenges are really gifts. They're not there to make our life difficult. They're there to really um, bring us back home and to bring us to a place that is um, safe and a place that we can really learn and grow from yeah and it kind of becomes more than just a you know physical place it becomes your the, the state of the condition your mind is in i think james baldwin says it this way perhaps home is not a place but simply an irrevocable condition you know when i feel at home i think of comforts i feel of safety you know right now we're heading into the holidays a lot of times there's fond memories, but sometimes those fond memories are mixed in with bitter ones. Um, because as you grow older, some of those seats are no longer, uh, there's, uh, it's empty. Um, so it's, it's, it's a reminder of not only that, but also how home kind of goes with you wherever you go, you know? So any thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I just moved to a new house <laughs> and um, so uh, you know, physically speaking, mm -hmm. you're so right that mm -hmm. it is not the actual physical building that mm -hmm. creates a home. It's mm -hmm. what's in our hearts and minds that is really bringing us home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel a lot of times, uh, you know, I, I try to say, especially working in the field is, you know, personalize your care. Like, what's going on with you? Get a second opinion, all that stuff. But don't personalize exterior exterior things that come in, because a lot of times, you know, uh, things can people are over uh, understaffed, and you know, you don't take it personally. Try, and I'm not saying it's 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 easy, but what, why I mentioned this is, um, if you know, if you're not in the, you're not feeling well, going on a vacation or going somewhere else, 
you're going to be that same person wherever you go and you know that kind of state of mind so a lot of times we're fixated with the idea of oh let's go to you know it's, it's colder up north on you know they'll be like let's go to like the caribbean all this stuff and it may be fun but what i find a lot of times uh, is becomes a distraction because at the end of the day you're going to be you're going to be in your own head at the end of it so Absolutely. You know, one of the things that I teach quite frequently is that the circumstances around us are neutral. They're mm -hmm. not positive. They're not negative. They are just there. It's really when we create thoughts about that circumstance that we lump it into a category of being positive or negative. Mm -hmm. So that's great news because it means that we have control over our experience of a variety of circumstances. And just like you were saying, you know, that um, going to another place, like changing your circumstances may not fix your um, feeling of happiness or safety. It's mm -hmm. really uh understanding the experience of a circumstance and knowing you have control over happiness now you don't mm. need to change something to bring it into your life that's very true i, I you know this reminds me um when i wa read the book man finding me from victor frankel and i just remember one of the things the themes that really stood out to me it wasn't the optimist that survived it wasn't the pessimist it was the one person who just just focus on what they can control today. You know, a lot yes. of times that's it. You know, it's, you know, if, if the problem is like, yeah, we want to be optimistic, but there's always the arbitrary date that we say, oh, March, it'll be better. May, and that's a lot of pressure after a while because, you know, unfortunately what happens when it gets to March and nothing happens or right. May or whatever that is. So sometimes, you know, simplicity, what can I do today? What yeah. can't I do today? Well, I did... I didn't get out, you know, I feel miserable, but I'm going to get out of bed. I'm going to make my bed. I'm going to eat something. I'll go out for a walk. Oh, this is too much. Halfway through the walk. Well, you know, that, and you just kind of pick up from there. So I feel um, that's where we can give ourselves a little bit of grace, I would say, because we, we have to kind of remind ourselves of the context of us, what we're going through, and not generalize it to the, the whole mass. Um, I don't know. I think, um, no, any thoughts? Sorry. Yeah. yeah, no, I was going to say I'm someone who loves a good goal. Like it, it's awesome <laughs> to set goals, but I think we get in trouble when we say, well, I'm going to, you know, get to be this weight and I'll mm -hmm. be happy when I reach mm -hmm. that goal. Mm -hmm. And that's not the way we should be living our life. It mm -hmm. is it is really, you know, set the goal, but it's doing steps along the way and creating happiness in the journey of it, not when you reach the goal. Yeah. And I think that the process gets missed out because that right. process can be the, you know, when I see at least some, a positive habit or positive thing I'm trying to enter my life. Yeah. I might have those milestones, but when I know it really clicks, is when I start enjoying the process. Yes. That's it. You know, that, yeah. that's where it really changes. I want to ask you, shifting gears, what has been an important factor in building a positive home environment as we've been, speak uh, been speaking this this time? But uh, anything we haven't covered and, and what have you seen not help? That's another thing I want to ask you. And yeah. Go ahead. So I'm going to um, kind of quickly tell my story and that this will help answer this question. The um, I in my childhood had kind of two goals, the goal to be a mom and the goal to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And I was very fortunate and achieved both of those goals. It was in my second year of pediatric residency that my daughter, who was my second child, uh, was diagnosed with neuroblastoma, a type of pediatric cancer. Mm -hmm. And during that time, my life came crashing down. I went into a very dark place. I was full of 
ideas that she was going to die, that I was scared to do this, that I didn't want to do this. I didn't want her to go through pain. She went through chemo, surgery, the whole works, um, survived. Things got better with time. And the further we got away from that cancer diagnosis, then when she turned 12, I got to be the physician to diagnose her with type one diabetes, um, which was uh, a diagnosis that I knew there was no cure. It was going to change the rest of her life. Um, and all of those thoughts that I had years earlier when she was an infant and was sick all came kind of swooming back. Mm -hmm. And I knew I didn't want to re-enter that kind of dark place again. Mm -hmm. So really was very um, intentional about uh, preventing myself from going back to that um, era. Um, the, uh, which brings me to the answer to your question, like what's an important factor for building a positive home environment? Well, home, like we were chatting about earlier, is really a place of safety, right? Mm -hmm. So in both of those times with my daughter, I did not feel safe. I was letting fear and guilt and overwhelm kind of run the show. Mm -hmm. And so I needed to create a home, um, if you will. Mm -hmm. And the, the important factor of that is decluttering. And what I mean is, yeah, physical decluttering, super important, mm -hmm. um, but uh, really decluttering your mind is mm -hmm. the most important factor for creating a positive home environment. And I say that because, you know, before I really went on this process of decluttering my mind, fear was driving my car on this journey of life. Mm -hmm. And sure, that's understandable as a parent who has a child with health issues, that fear is going to be part of that journey, but it doesn't need to be in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. And so the decluttering is really taking that fear out of the car and putting it in the trunk and mm -hmm. allowing that to come along for the ride, but not letting it be in the driver's seat because that is what creates this feeling of unsafety and that you mm -hmm. don't have control because fear is driving your vehicle. Yeah. You know, I, I you know, I think a lot of times we think of, Oh, either um, like there's only two options. It's kind of a logical fallacy. You know, a lot of times we're like, well, I'm either going to be a part of this process with my daughter per se in this illustration or I'm just not going to be helpful at all. Why isn't there a third choice? Why can't I be helpful and also helpful for myself? Yes. Lot of times we, so that, that, that in essence, a lot of times I see um, this dualistic kind of mindset of like, I can only do one or the other. But a lot of times we were beginning to find out that just like you shared and I appreciate your story, that there's other ways to approach it. I can still be as intentional, be as supportive, actually probably more so because I'm taking care of myself. And yeah, and and it goes back to the quote that you said at the beginning with mm -hmm. that you can't water somebody else's garden when yours is dry. I mm -hmm. just butchered yeah. that quote. No, but, it's right here. <laughs> but um, yeah. the, uh, the, it, it goes back to that, that mm -hmm. if you don't take care of yourself, that you can't be this great parent taking care of a sick kid. That there is a reason why on airplanes they say, mm -hmm. put on your oxygen mask first before you help somebody else. So filling your cup and taking care of yourself will not only allow you to have a great 
feeling of purpose and safety and control in your own life, but it makes you a better parent and a better um, uh, better able to provide service to others because your cup is full. Yeah, and I feel like um, you know, I like when you mentioned the decluttering. Uh, a lot of times, um, I, I I see myself sometimes I'm. I'm I'm trying to solve a problem or me and my wife are talking about something we're trying to work through and i really i see myself in third person like this conversation yeah it has a lot of factual basis there's a lot of things that may be helpful but i have to go work tomorrow <laughs> it's like it's like hours and hours in like even though we're gonna be so i'm gonna be super helpful but not super helpful for myself another illustration is there was a time when i was you know really struggling myself you know and, and i was getting treatment myself and I remember like later on when I uh, when I was doing better and my, my mom and as a parent I think you'll appreciate this. I'm like, how can I give back? And my mom's like, this stay well, this stay better. Yeah, that's it. And I'm like, how is that different? And when we think about family, when we think about home, a lot of times it's not the uh, monetary. Like I could, I think it's harder as we get older to give gifts to each other <laughs> because we really like don't feel awkward. Like I'd rather give than to receive anything, you know, at this this time. But when it's someone you really, really care about and you want the best for them, the best thing they could do is take care of themselves. Absolutely. Hey, I need and then when it comes to that, um, I want to ask. Um, uh, I know you shared your story, but is there anything else you would like to share? Any updates about, like, I give an opportunity, but you went a little early. It's totally fine. Uh, I do appreciate how, um, how you answered the question. But is there anything else you want to share with those who are listening a little bit, a little more about yourself or maybe what you're doing now as we, after this, we'll continue with the, the topic? Yeah. So the, um, you know, this is what I kind of alluded to at the beginning, like, uh, the story I said had a lot of challenges in it. I kind of glossed over, you know, 12 mm -hmm. years of challenges yeah. in there by fast forwarding it. But I look back on those challenges now and I think to myself, I am so grateful that I had those opportunities to learn and grow in those moments. I don't get me wrong. Do not wish the um, challenges to be part of the life of even my worst enemy. <laughs> but um, the I now have the ability to have perspective and see that those challenges were actually real gifts. And mm. now, not only do am I better able to take care of patients, I'm a better mom. I'm a better person for myself. I um, became a certified life coach in my medical career to help with mentoring, but realized those tools of coaching were really helping families in the clinic. So I now help families, parents who have chronically ill kids to realize that you know, fear and guilt don't need to be leading their life, that it, that it is a challenge that life gives us, but it ebbs and flows. And um, we have the ability to turn that challenge into a real opportunity to learn. And I am proof of that. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I was thinking when you're you're mentioning um, your your challenges. A lot of times, um, I learn more from my challenges, like my mistakes, the people that I, I don't agree with. You know, this is the thing that unfortunately gets lost. Not this to speak generally. A lot of times, our conversations are with people who are like minded. It's it's more comfortable. Let's be honest. If if they're people who are, who oppose what we think. Um, a lot of times I ask myself, why does it bother me this much? So kind of I reflect on that, and that helps me get a deeper understanding. So this one church lady, older church lady, used to say to me, people are either lessons or blessings. So you kind of learn things from that, that perspective. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, you know, you um, brought up a very important skill in life, which is to be curious, mm. being curious 
about all sorts of things mm -hmm. will make us a better person and a better society. You know, be curious as to why does that individual have that perspective that I don't disagree with mm -hmm. and uh, allowing yourself to, to be curious about it mm -hmm. comes a, a better understanding as a result of that curiosity. And we can do that with anything. We can get curious, like, you know what? That didn't go so well or didn't go as I planned. Mm -hmm. What could I do next time to make it go better? What do I think it didn't work? Um, mm -hmm. I think we get stuck all too often in mm -hmm. blame instead mm -hmm. of curiosity, that when we blame others for how mm -hmm. we feel, or we blame ourselves for how something failed, that we get into trouble because we're not really looking at it from an objective perspective, and mm -hmm. we're not going to learn and grow from that. Yeah, and I feel it's not that I'm... Um, um, I would say I don't look at the world negatively, but I would say I see it more as we're humans that we make mis mistakes. But I used to I coined this kind of thing that I say is we're we're exceptional and unimpressive at the same times as humans. And I feel when you have that kind of balance, you 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 do better because the fact of the matter is I will make mistakes. You know, I will probably. Make, uh, but it, the tragedy is when we don't learn from them, when our project is too big to kind of say, well, maybe I didn't say everything or reflect on I, uh, on what could have I what could I do better? And maybe it's not really directly you could have done better, but maybe there's something else. I remember there's an untranslatable word. I'm half South Korean, so it's called nunchi. It means it's kind of like this self-awareness of the environment in the room. So nunchi is a untranslatable word it's not really any other language doesn't have it but in korea for some reason but well, i could see it from my mom she knows everything <laughs> when I, I come into the room she knows exactly how i feel but they're really good at reading the room so they had a word for that so that it's called nunchi um i think all in that regards it helps it helps you kind of reflect and kind of gauge but at the same time you know making a uh, choice or not making a choice is still a choice, you know. So even if you have all that knowledge, what the, is and the under you know, I think we have a pref uh, we have a lot of information, but not a lot of understanding. And sometimes when we have that time, Winston Churchill's not to batter, but I'd like I want to share this. He says we shape our homes and then our homes shape us. It's very important that we take time and account for what is our home. You know, a lot of times we're like. Um, you know, in there's this old saying, if you want to make, be rich, work in the United States. If you want to ha have time for family, work in Europe, They're like Europeans would say that. Cause like just how the, there's a, there's a big gap when it comes to the, all that stuff. But where's the priority? Is it priorities to make a lot of, a lot of stuff or is it time, is it priority to be around family or is it a little bit both? So it, it's interesting when you have those reflective questions that you take time and when it comes to your home and what's important to you. Yeah. And, you know, when you talk about like priorities, one of the things that I work with commonly with parents is time management and priorities, because of course, when you are thrown a challenge that adds work to your plate that you didn't really choose, you have to figure out how to make it all fit in a day right mm -hmm. and so getting very clear on what your priorities are and what your values are so mm -hmm. that how you're acting and and allotting your time in a day is in line with those priorities is something super important that i think we can all continue to do a better job at yeah and i i feel you know that that on top of that um of that idea of what uh, i mentioned before about understanding everyone like there's this one quote which i hope i'm you know i get better at everyone hears only what he understands and then like that's 
um, that's you know if you if you shrink the playing field, you're gonna kind of come to, to a very select few conclusions. Um, but if, if you are able to take the time to realize now, um, I, I do like this quote. I do like it because it just shows that the importance of reflecting and, uh, and understanding what's important to you. Um, and just like you mentioned, priorities, that's very important because if it's, you're not on the same page, if you're not speaking plainly, then, you know, you know, you may have, un, uh, maybe large expectations and you get kind of dis discouraged, especially with parents, you know, you know, my adult son has been sick for so long. A lot of times, unfortunately, what you a lot of times hear is the, the client himself or herself doesn't feel hurt because they're not part of the conversation at this point so that gets problematic but when there's a priority and there's goals and there's this understanding that takes time and it is work you know in the church setting people are like oh i want to do i want to do ministry i'm like helping people is inconvenient i'll be honest helping people is not that i don't want to but if you don't if you understand that from the basis if you understand that helping people takes time takes work then you come from a, a better angle than I'm just going to do this because it feels good. So I want to feel good to do this. So it, it, I feel it gives you a better footing and I guess a direction. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when you said this quote about everyone hears only what he understands, this uh, uh, like rings so true in a doctor's office, right? <laughs> because I can tell you, you know, I have explained things to families before and I got into the habit because of my experience on being on the patient side of things mm -hmm. of asking the families like, okay, now tell me what I repeat back to me, what I just said, like, how are you going to explain this to your family members who are going to ask and realizing that they only hear about 10% of what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And, um, but having a conversation, um, allows them to come to a better understanding, um, asking questions allows somebody to understand better but really having the courage to be curious is mm -hmm. what brings us to that understanding yeah if, if, you, if you don't feel there's a need you're not going to go ahead and address it and so right. and that curiosity is seems like a small word but it is an important one because yeah. if, I, if i'm everything's in my mind is everything is awesome and the best it could be or this is what's going to be is going to be that way anyway because you're not I, you don't have to feel that there's a need to make any adjustments i want to ask you segueing what have you seen worked and we're not talking about just positive home environment but gaining and maintaining more like how do you see that work well and how has it not like what do you what have you seen work in your own self and others yeah. So it, you know, I, I mentioned the whole decluttering of your mind thing and, and, um, some of the listeners may be wondering like, what in the world is she talking about? Like, how do you declutter your mind? I, I will tell you the, the very first thing that I would tell somebody to do, to do that decluttering of their mind is on a regular basis. So, I do it every single morning, get a blank sheet of paper or a blank journal, blank notebook and a pen and just jot down everything that you have on your mind. And some days it may make a lot of sense with what you're writing on the page. Some days it may just be kind of scattered thoughts that don't have a very cohesiveness to it. Hmm. But putting it down on paper allows you to be more objective about what's going on in your head because you can actually like see oh wow. look at look at these thoughts that are running through my head wow. like this is really where my fear is coming from like this thought is not helping me and so it uh, allows you to take more action on figuring out what thoughts you want to 
keep in your mind and what thoughts are you're going to let go of because letting go and uh, decluttering your mind mm. is such an important task for really allowing this mind work to happen. Yeah. And, you know, um, journaling, I always encourage a lot of my clients to journal, just to kind of write because honestly, one of the biggest complaints is they don't feel heard. Sometimes it's cathartic just to journal what they're going through. Another thing that I find very helpful mindfulness i practiced it before mindfulness idea is it just it's similar and the idea is that you're trying to see yourself as a third person objectively so you know a lot of times when we have illustrations and, and you know, i mentioned the bible before but parables were a version of that parables were just a story to highlight something that's a little bit further and that's where i'm coming to you know when you're writing things down when you're able to look objectively create a little space from you and the situation right. that helps yes um yes. one thing is that's hard is sifting through it when it's so close it gets so messy it gets so urgent yes you mentioned time management i i know everyone who works in the healthcare does documenting and i know a lot of time i i was struggling at first because you document like this is take forever you want to save you want to do all this stuff i just time myself i put a watch i time myself and i thought it was it's funny time is such an illusion i thought it was taking me like i don't know 20 30 minutes to do one major note it was five minutes seven minutes it's funny how the mind tricks us and while i was establishing more being more effective in that i just had to reiterate remind myself hey this doesn't take that long to do and th that you know it's just these uh, these illusions of time and time management sometimes is that breaking free from that illusion because I do my best work when I slow down. I'll tell you that right now. I know this, you know, when I'm either doing the podcast, doing video editing, whatever. The rushing bit is on my, is all on me. It, like the idea is really slowing down, taking the time, because really it's not that much time. In our minds, it feels a lot faster, a lot, lot you know, a lot has gone through. But, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it goes to focus. Mm -hmm. And that's why you get, uh, more done and your best work done is because when you set aside that time to do something like charting mm -hmm. and you say, okay, I have exactly one hour to get all my charts done today, mm -hmm. um, that you will focus hard on mm -hmm. just charting. And so it, all the distractions that creep into our lives mm -hmm. go away because you have laser focus on mm -hmm. charting because you only have an hour. Mm -hmm. So it, um, there's a lot of folks who talk about getting into a flow state. Um, mm -hmm. and that's just where your focus gets super narrow. Um, so what you are talking about, we can do with everything because mm -hmm. you are absolutely correct. Like time is what we make of it. I mean, the, the, you know, I just went to a fall festival yesterday, had a great time and it felt like I was only there for five minutes because I was having such a good time, mm -hmm. but it was really several hours that I was there. Mm -hmm. So time is this like interpretation of, mm -hmm. um, of our experience and we can continue to do a better job of managing what we have the ability to manage when it comes to time. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I always thought I was, you know, I'm sure those listening had those classes in school or university that felt like they went three hours, but they were only like an hour. And then you, yes. and then you had um, those those times, like you're, you're explaining, it was a whole you know, long weekend. You're like, what happened? It was Friday. I had, a, I had an extra third exactly. day. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it's gone. So it, it's it, time is, you know, like you said, what you make of it. But it's important when you, at least for me, to recognize that, you know, our, sense of time is skewed you know and and uh the pressures may be unrelated but it is also propelling this situation so is it do i feel like well i want to chart per se using the, the same illustration but i also need to contact this client well 
I can't I do both? It's like the same thing as like this. Oh, I can either do one or another. And a lot of times in life, you could, there's always a third option. We kind of like to kind of say it's either, either, or, but, um, I would, I would encourage those who are listening, try to see if there's a third option out there, find help and all that. And when it comes to, you know, building a home, you know, uh, I feel that that's going to be important because if you don't self reflect, if you don't reflect what you really want, and like you said, curiosity is such an important concept. If you're not even knowing you need help, that's a scary part to be in because then you're yeah. nothing changes. Um, let me see. Um, um, uh, there's Jer Jeremy Renner says building is about getting around the obstacles that presented to you. So working the problem, you know, like it's, sometimes it's really just the problem. The, the um, not saying, well, this shouldn't happen to me. Why is this happening to me? Um, forgiving yourself, even if it's your own mistake. So, you know, Hey, what can I do now? Like, like Victor Franco It's not about, well, um, this is horrible. It is horrible. I'm not, I'm not minimizing those who are going through these obstacles, but is there something I can work on? Is there something I can control? I want to ask you as we kind of wrap up, what would you want people to be reminded of this November? You know, it's holidays for a lot of us coming up, Thanksgiving, a lot of cooking, a lot of <laughs> you know, people try to do diets at this time, but it's like, well, you know, you can you can do it, but you don't have to. You know, but it's it's a lot of family. It's a lot, and sometimes that's terrifying for people. You know, given like the context. You know, the, you know, there's, you know. So, what what would you like to say to those who want to remind it? Any final thoughts? Also, yeah, you know, I would love to remind your audience that November is kind of a month of gratitude, just with Thanksgiving, and finding gratitude every single day has been scientifically proven to increase someone's happiness. So I encourage people when, you know, we talked about journaling a little bit earlier, but as part of that journaling, not only get the thoughts out of your head, but force yourself to write down three very specific things that you are grateful for. And what I mean by specific is you can't write down, I'm grateful for my kids. You have to write down something like, I am grateful for the phone conversation I had with my daughter yesterday. So very specific. And by doing that, the reason it works to increase somebody's happiness is that it forces our brain to have that focus um, like we were talking about with charting earlier in time, it focuses our brain on blessings that we have in our lives. It's just like the, you know, you're purchasing a red car and mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're driving down the street and all you see is red cars. Um, they've always been there, but you weren't paying attention to it because that wasn't what your brain was focused on. Same deal. If you focus on gratitude, the filter that your brain sees life through will change and it will increase your happiness. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking um, a couple months back in May, it's Mental Health Awareness Month. And I, I, I did like the theme I made this year was remembering our names. Now, remembering our names is very personal, but it, I feel a lot of times, like I said in the beginning, personalize your care, personalize the situation. Yes, it's work, but I would say if you remember the name of the individual, it's not work. You know, it, it's it's the person like, well, um, if someone's touched with someone with depression or something of that nature, well, I you know I don't like depression. I get that. I, I don't like all the messiness, but is that going to stop you from helping your son or daughter who's struggling with it? Probably not. If you if you remember the name, you remember who they are. You know, so a lot of times, like you mentioned, like personalized, personalized, personalized. But yeah. like you said before, when it comes to external, neutral. You know, really, a lot of things happen, unfortunately, to a lot of people. You know, we could just look at the news and we know a lot of things happen to a lot of people. It's how we respond to them, how we work and find help, how we look to our communities and try to get a way for us to make today a little bit better. And that doesn't mean 
you know, those are little steps, not always huge steps. It's those little ones that really count. I want to say thank you so much, uh, Dr. Maureen, for sharing your insight. It was wonderful. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, it, um, what I want to say is um, to those who are listening, um, if you want to find out more, I don't know, do you have a website or anything that you that you have? I do. Um, my website is Maureen Michelle MD.com and Michelle is spelt with one L. I also have a book available on Amazon. If any of your listeners are parents who have chronically ill kids, the book is called Reclaiming Life and it gives practical tips that parents can start doing today to improve their own life and subsequently improve the lives of their family. I'll, I'll get those links later, and they'll be in the notes, those who are listening, so you can check it out, find out more about Dr. Maureen and all the great work she's doing. I just want to also share those who are listening. Remember to stay updated with Revive Ministry through various platforms. RevivalMinistryFL.com is our website. Leaving with this last quote from Dr. Martha Luther King, it says, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear.